We have before us on the floor today a bipartisan government funding measure. And as the chairman of the Homeland Security Appropriations Subcommittee, I rise in support of the conference agreement to secure our border and fund our government and end any possibility of a shutdown at the same time. This is an agreement compromise between Republicans and Democrats, between the House and the Senate. And because it is a compromise, none of us really got everything that we wanted. When you're working to reach an agreement, whether you're in government or in a family, it's important to understand the difference between compromising on details and compromising on your principles. While this agreement may compromise on some of the specifics, it does not compromise on our commitment to our nation and, that, and to secure our nation. That commitment is also shared by our president, who has been unwavering in his promise to strengthen our border. And it's a goal we must achieve in a smart and informed way to address the real and ever-changing ever challenges that we face as a nation. On the border of its, itself, I've been very clear that our agreement had to include three critical elements, three legs of the stool, physical barriers, technology, and personnel. There were a few sticking points with our Democrat colleagues. We did hear from the Speaker of the House that there would be no wall or there would not be one dollar for the wall. Instead, this agreement provides almost triple the money for new wall construction that we appropriated last year. In fact, we'll pay for 55 new miles of wall in the Rio Grande Valley, where the Custom and Border Protection has told us it is desperately needed. This agreement will build twice as many miles as new wall as last year's appropriations, despite the fact that we were negotiating with, a, uh, we were negotiating with those who didn't want to have any wall. Would I prefer more money for the wall? Of course. But this bill provides the most money ever in a single appropriations bill for a barrier. I drafted legislation passed by the Senate Appropriations Committee last June that would have fully funded the President's budget request for the wall. And I would have voted for higher amounts, and did actually in committee, for higher amounts of funding for the wall. That's because I believe strongly that physical barriers are a vital part, part of securing our border. I saw it myself when I toured the borders in California and Texas. I saw the need, I saw how the walls work, and I will stand side by side with the President as he works to secure additional money to construct border wall in the future. Um, we got $1.375 billion, and that's a long way from $1. It's a critical down payment on the President's ultimate security, border security goal. The best path forward to secure our border, border today is to pass this agreement. The bill also stands with the men and women of ICE, Immigration and Customs Enforcement. A statutory cap on the number of ICE detention beds would have required dangerous criminals to be released from ICE custody. It would have posed a threat to families and communities across the country, and it would have compromised an important principle. This agreement rejects that anti-ICE proposal. I've said many times, I support the men and women of ICE and their important work to secure our nation. And that is why the agreement before us gives ICE the operational flexibility it needs to accomplish its goals. Taking advantage of the flexibility this bill provides, ICE can utilize 18% more detention beds than they are currently using. That means ICE can continue interior enforcement efforts and be ready to respond to any surges on the border. So it gives ICE the flexibility that they need. I, I say to my friends who, like me, want more money for the wall, this agreement is better for the wall and better for ICE than any other alternative. Rejecting this agreement would cost dozens of miles of new wall and jeopardize ICE's ability to detain dangerous criminals. Another government shutdown could not, cannot, and should not be allowed to happen. We need to provide certainty to our federal workers and to the American people uh, who we serve. I also think we need to restore trust in our ability to work across the aisle, to work across party lines, to reach settlements, negotiated settlements that move us forward. Because if we're in a stalemate, we're standing still. And in my opinion, if you're standing still, you're actually going backwards. And we don't want to do that as a nation. The work done by the men and women in our federal workforce during the shutdown should continue to be applauded. Without pay and in a period of great uncertainty, thousands of men and women did their jobs at the highest level. 
We should be thankful for their service, and we are. So one of the things in, in, I'm proud of in this bill is a 1.9 percent pay increase for the men and women of the Department of Homeland Security. This is ICE. This is Border Patrol. To the Coast Guard, Secret Service, FEMA, we salute you. Under this agreement, we will also hire 200 new Border Patrol agents over the FY18 funded level to defend and police our border. And we will add $600 million for non-intrusive inspection technology. As I've said before, border wall, personnel, and technology are all vital parts of securing our border. There are, they are very, very critical in addressing the drug epidemic that has plagued my state of West Virginia and many other parts of this country. This bill includes the highest level of funding ever in a Homeland Appropriations Bill to combat the opioid epidemic, more than $700 million. And it has funds for investigations when it comes to human trafficking, looking into the dark web, and other crimes. The Homeland Security portion of this agreement also takes a major step forward in advancing our nation's Coast Guard by building a new polar security cutter to help address operational needs in the Arctic. This is critical to our homeland security. We also address the needs of the TSA, the Secret Service, and FEMA, to name just a few of the other entities within this title. This bill is not the bill I would have written alone. I don't get to do that. It is the product of give and take that is necessary to forge a bipartisan consensus. And it's a strong compromise that will help secure our border and make America safer. Senator John Tester, the ranking member of our subcommittee, a, a senator from Montana, has been an excellent partner as we have worked to deliver a bill worthy of the men and women of the Department of Homeland Security. So I thank him for his efforts throughout this process. We've worked very well together. I also want to thank Chairman Shelby and Vice Chairman Leahy for their work in guiding the Appropriations Committee to a deal. These are seasoned, seasoned appropriators who know how to get the job done. Their leadership has demonstrated that the Appropriations Committee can come together and forge bipartisan consensus in the national interest. The leaders of the House Appropriations Committee, Chairman Nita Lowy, who I know very well, and Ranking Member Kay Granger, who's a good friend of mine, I have my service in the House, as well as my counterpart in the House, the Chairman of Homeland Security, Lucille Robo Allard, and Ranking Member Chuck Fleischman of the House Homeland Security Subcommittee. They deserve our gratitude for forging ahead with a willingness to negotiate. I also appreciate the contributions of all the members of the, our conference committee, and I'd like to thank a group of individuals who have dedicated a lot of nights, weekends, and family time to this effort. Their knowledge of the facts and their commitment to the cause never waned, even though their time to sleep did wane. Shannon Hines, who is uh, um, Chairman Shelby's right-hand woman on the committee, was fantastic. To Adam Tell, Peter Babb, Christian Lee, Chris Cook, and Thompson Moore of the Homeland Security Subcommittee staff, which I chair, as well as my own appropriation uh, staffer, J.T. Jazerski, I say thank you, a big thank you. So, Mr. President, though I have spent the majority of my time today and the last several weeks on my bill, our bill, my thanks and congratulations also go to my fellow chairmen of, uh, who have titles in this package. They have produced legislation that will help West Virginians expand access to broadband, combat the opioid epidemic, enhance our transportation, foster economic development, and advance scientific research and discovery. They too faced similar challenges to draft bipartisan legislation, and they too got it done. In closing, though conferees compromised on details, we did not compromise our principles. Passing this conference agreement is in our national security interest. It will pro provide the resources, the direction, and the support that the President has said many times he needs to protect our nation. I am very proud to have been a part of this process, and I encourage my colleagues to join me in a bipartisan fashion in passing this bill later this afternoon. Thank you, Mr. President.